The potential due to an annulus. An annulus with an inner radius A and outer radius B has charge density sigma and lies in the xy plane with its center at the origin as shown in the figure. So this lies on the xy plane, the origin is at the center. Part A. Using the convention that the potential vanishes at infinity, determine the potential at all points on the z-axis. Part B. Determine the electric field at all points on the z-axis by differentiating the potential. Part C. Show that in the limit A goes to 0, B goes to infinity. A goes to 0, this uh, gap closes, and B goes to infinity, it turns into a flat sheet. The electric field reproduces the result for an infinite plane sheet of charge. Okay, so we have this annulus and we're considering an area element here that contains charge dq and the area element has an area that is multiply multiplication of dr, the differential change in radial distance multiplied with r d theta so this is our arc length so the area element has an area r dr d theta so this theta is defined here with respect to the y-axis all right now we can calculate the potential the potential due to this charge element, dv, is k Coulomb's constant dq divided by the distance between this uh, charge element and the point of interest. That's what I called d here. So k dq divided by d. Now what is dq? dq, the charge of this area element is sigma times dA, assuming that I have a uniform charge distribution with charge density, aerial charge density sigma. So this will be sigma r dr d theta because our dA is r dr d theta. Now at the same time, if I'm at a distance z from the origin, and uh, the radial distance r from the origin for my charge element, z square plus r square is d square. You can see here I have a right triangle. So um, z square plus r square is equal to d square. In other words, d, the distance between the charge element and the point of interest, is z square plus r square square root. All right. And the potential due to this charge element dv then will become k dq, which is sigma dA, sigma r dr d theta, divided by the distance d, which is z square plus r square square root. Now in order to calculate the potential v due to this annulus, I have to integrate over the angle theta from 0 to 2 pi and radial distance r between a and b. So this will give me the integral of r dr d theta divided by z square plus r square square root. The integral over the angle theta, so I'm rotating around this uh, arc here, so that will give me 2 pi. So 2 pi k sigma integral from a to b. Now I have r dr left inside, r dr divided by z square plus r square square root. Now, in order to perform this integral, let's say, let's, go and, let's define this z square plus r square as u square. 
u square is z square plus r square. So that 2u du is equal to 2r dr. So z is fixed. It's the location where I want to calculate the potential. The 2s will cancel out. And the potential becomes v is equal to 2 pi k sigma integral from u minimum to u maximum, whatever that is. Uh, R dr, I will substitute u du. And square root of z square plus r square is u. So these u's will cancel. And the integral of du is u. So this will be 2 pi k sigma u evaluated between u minimum and u maximum. So for u, I'm going to substitute a square root of z square plus r square. And this will be evaluated between r is equal to a and r is equal to b. And also note that k, Coulomb's constant, is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. So uh, substituting for k 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 here, I will get uh, sigma over 2 epsilon 0. And then for square root of z square plus r square, I will get square root of z square plus b square minus square root of z square plus a square. So the end result for the potential will be potential at a distance z from the center on the central axis is sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0, z square plus b square to the power 1 half minus z square plus a square to the power 1 half. This will be the potential on the central axis. Now remember in part B, we are supposed to calculate the electric field at all points in space. So electric field by differentiating the potential. So in part B, I'm going to use the relationship between potential and electric field. Electric field is minus the gradient of the potential. So uh, that will be the calculation. So this is because the potential changes with z minus dv dz in k hat direction. So now I'm taking a derivative with respect to z minus sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0. So now I have a 1 half from the parentheses, z square plus b square to the power minus one half and derivative of inside is 2z. And for the rest, I have a similar situation, minus one over two, z square plus a square to the power minus one half multiplied by 2z in k hat direction these twos will cancel and i will find that the electric field is sigma z over 2 epsilon 0 uh, now you can see that i have a minus sign here so if i operate the minus sign the first term will become uh, minus minus 1 over z square plus b square square root and then the, this minus sign will make this one plus plus 1 over z square plus a square square root and this will be in k hat direction so that's the electric field now in part C, I want to look at the limit as A goes to zero. The limit as A goes to zero, I will have 
1 over square root of z square plus a square becoming 1 over z. So I'm just substituting a is equal to 0. And when b goes to infinity at the same time, the term 1 over square root z square plus b square for a finite z value will become 0. Right, so b goes to infinity, this becomes 0, a goes to 0, this becomes 1 over z. So I will obtain the electric field in this limit to be sigma z over 2 epsilon 0. The first term is minus 1 over square root z squared plus b squared, that is... Uh, 0. The second term, 1 over square root z squared plus a squared becomes 1 over z in k hat direction. Now you can see this z will get rid of this z. This is just 0, so that is uh, adding nothing to this uh, result. And I will be left with the electric field of an infinite plane sheet sigma over 2 epsilon 0 in k hat direction. So I note that this is the infinite plane sheet of charge. The same result. How did we obtain this result? Well, uh, we have used a Gaussian surface. Remember here we put a cylinder. E dot dA is E times uh, pi r square for the two sides, so 2 E pi r square. And the charge enclosed is sigma times pi r square. So we get sigma over 2 epsilon 0 on this side and sigma over 2 epsilon 0 on the other side. This we have done several times uh, in uh, the application of Gauss law. So the result was sigma over 2 epsilon 0. And for this point, it's going to be a pointing in plus k hat direction, sigma over 2 epsilon 0 in k hat direction. Okay, so we have considered the potential due to an annulus, uh, inner radius A, outer radius B, lying on the xy plane with the center at the origin. So we consider a charge element dq, which is sigma dA or sigma r dr d theta, and sigma is for a uniform charge distribution. Uh, here, well, I'm assuming that it is uniform, but it doesn't matter. Sigma is going to be a constant uh, in this region anyway. Uh, so I'm going to consider the distance d from this point to the point of interest where I want to calculate the potential on the central axis. That distance I call d. This uh, charge element is at a radial distance r from the center and this point is a distance z from the origin on the z-axis. The potential due to this charge element is kdq over d which is k sigma r dr d theta over square root of z square plus r square, which will be integrated between 0 and 2 pi and a and b to cover the full region uh, which contains charge. And by doing this u square equals z square plus r square substitution, I see that from this transformation, this is a very simple integral. The result is sigma over 2 epsilon 0, z square plus b square to 1 half minus z square plus a square to 1 half. And k Coulomb's constant is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. Electric field is minus gradient of the potential minus partial derivative with respect to z in k hat direction because potential is a function of z. Uh, I obtain this result uh, from this differentiation. In the limit, a goes to 0, b goes to infinity. a goes to 0, b goes to infinity. This becomes an infinite plane sheet of charge. And indeed, the electric field that I calculate in this limit is sigma over 2 epsilon 0, 
k hat the, uh, the result I have obtained previously using Gauss law.